How are you doing this, Martin from Gardens for Life? Well, my um, one arm experience um, is getting better. I'm able to do a little bit more work in the garden now at this stage after three weeks of it. And um, I apologize for the background noise. My very friendly neighbor happens to be using this trimmer uh, at the same time as when I finally get a chance to make a video. That's okay though. Hopefully it's not too bad in the background. Um, as you can see in the background, the garden is really flying it. Um, so this is actually uh, mid-June now and I wanted to give you a quick update on what kind of plants we have in our nursery. We also had a, a bit of a workshop on the weekend where we did some um, no-dig garden maintenance where we basically just pulled a lot of weeds and we're going to make another video about that uh, now. For those of you who don't know, we have a website. It's gardensforlife.ie and it's forward slash shop to, if you want to take a look at see what we have available. And we also have potted plants as well. But those are only available to those living in Ireland and Northern Ireland. So these are actually buffalo currant. They have a lovely yellow flower and also berries. And these ones here are Worcester berry, which is a cross between gooseberry and blackcurrant, but more on the gooseberry side, as you can see, they do have thorns. So all of our um, two liter motherworts have been sold. So um, we have one liter ones left. So you can see how big they get by putting the one liter one right beside one of the ones that was planted one year ago. You can look at how big that plant is. It's a lovely plant too, and it's medicinal. Um, we like to keep it just for the flowers and for the insects as well. It's a lovely border plant. Looks a little bit like a thistle, but a bit more elegant. We have a couple of um, black Hamburg grapes as well. And these are actually a marshmallow plants, and I wanted to show you how big those get. Let me just take one of these over there. I'll show you exactly how big they can get. This is actually, let me put that on the ground here. That's a two liter plant and it will grow into a plant that big. And that's only about half a height. It's about nearly two meters in height now, or six feet, six and a half feet. It'll grow much taller than that too, and much wider. A wonderful uh, medicinal plant too. It has mucilage in the leaves, lovely for tea. And the flowers are nice, they're pink and white, great for the insects, attracts all the beneficial insects and um, the roots are traditionally made into marshmallows, believe it or not. That's where they came from originally. And here we have some thyme. This is English winter, as you can see it also flowers, so it's quite ornamental. It's uh, not one of the creeping ones, but it does grow into a little bit of a bush, maybe about six inches high. And here beside that we have some salt bush, just a few left. That grows into a huge plant. You can grow it indoors, more successfully so than outdoors. And the leaves are lovely for eating, even raw as it is, or using as a spinach substitute. And um, beside that, there are some um, golden yarrow, which is a really nice ornamental plant, but also really good for the insects. And here we have just a few elderberries. These are actually American elders, but those I'm afraid we're not going to offer yet because we only have three as of yet. And um, we are also offering these flowering currants. This is a pink variety of currant. It does not make berries, and uh, that's why it's called flowering currant, I guess. And they do grow quite nicely and into um, an ornamental bush, which also helps the insects. And these are uh, hollyhocks, which is a traditional um, uh, Irish cottage um, garden flower and it has um, in the first year it makes this uh, silhouette of leaves and in the second year it's a perennial by the way it will grow for many years but in the second year typically it makes this uh, flowering stalk very tall maybe about um, five to six feet in, in height and uh, this is a jet black variety so that's a really unusual one it's a really nice one and we also have some comfrey plants that's them. I'll just show you what they grow like. Hang on. So these are actually comfrey plants that are fully grown. 
and just these were only grown from a little cutting about a year ago As you can see the bees love them and all the other pollinating insects too these are actually honey bees if anyone knows what kind of bee that is please leave a comment below can you see it uh, the wind it must make their job very hard just as I'm walking by, I have to show you these um, Chinese artichokes. Take a look at how dense they are. Okay, and they're grown in a crate from last year. Didn't even harvest these actually. Those will be available again from uh, autumn. Look at this lovely Bulgarian poppy. We do still have a few um, red currant plants left. And these are the ladybird poppies. They are perennial, they're meant to be. Sometimes they don't make it through the winter though, unfortunately. Look at the kind of havoc the wind is causing here. The wind has knocked over all these black currants. And there's more red currants and some goji berries. These are the gojis. They've grown to a quite a big bush. We have some indoors in the greenhouse and some outdoors. I haven't had flowers off them yet and we have several varieties. This is actually the best plant we have probably. The uh, perennial kale, Taunton Dean, which uh, Charles Dowding also advocates a lot. It's a lovely kale and it uh, never actually goes to flower so you have to take cuttings of it in order for it to uh, be propagated. Whereas Portuguese kale you can grow from seed. These are actually hyssop and they smell so good. Oh yeah, that smells really good. Um, hyssop is a lovely plant to have. Makes a nice flower. And these are josta berries. Which is a cross between a gooseberry and a, ger a German blackcurrant, I believe and that's where the name comes from. These are some great mullen plants, although some of them may be uh, Olympic mullen, as you can see there is multiple stalks, and look how hairy the leaves are, they're really soft, they're also known as cowboy's toilet paper, which is funny because you know the, the leaves actually are covered in hair, that's because it's trying to protect itself from drying out, which is not an issue here in Ireland, but the uh, Leaves are really good for the lungs as a tea and the uh, flowers are good as a ear um, a medicine too. We like to plant these great mullins and Olympic mullins too into um, our gardens at the borders just to attract the beneficial insects as well. And we'll collect the seed at the end of the season too. And these are um, birdland elderberry trees. As you can see here this is the size they start as and I'll just show you, bring you over here for a minute. So this is the size it is when it starts. And you have two yields of elderberry. You have the flowers in early summer and you have the berries in autumn. So this is actually the tree in the background. And it's already about three meters tall. Hello Jacob, how are you doing? Are you coming to visit? And uh, what's the name of this tree we're looking at here? This one here. Any idea? Elderberry tree or elder tree. Look, give that a smell. Mm, you can make cordial from that. It smells lovely. And uh, you can also make wine, country wines from that. Uh, those flowers are actually antiseptic and you can use them for a number of different things and the um, the actual uh, berries in the autumn time you can make a cordial from them as well and keep it all winter in the fridge and take a little sip every day just to prevent colds as well what are these ones here jacob good man and what do they do eat yeah you can eat them there's one. 
So these are actually green hinomaki, which is actually a um, Japanese variety. The best thing about green berries that ripen green is actually that the birds don't see them and they don't realize that they're ready. So um, you get to eat them before they do. This is lovage here. It's a really good herb for soups and you can even eat it as it is. As you can see, the children like it too. Is it any good? <laughs> this is oregano. Uh, it's a really good culinary herb too, as well as medicinal. Um, it's perennial and it makes flowers as well. I'll just show you one over here. We like to plant these herbs, especially the flowering ones, um, near the edges of our beds to attract beneficial insects so that they take care of our crops as well. But here you can see that's just about ready to go to flower now. You can see how big that gets. It's probably about a foot and a half tall. And um, it takes up a relatively small amount of space considering you have a yield of leaves and flowers, but also um, it helps with attracting the beneficial insects as well. And it looks nice at the edge. As it happens, it's at the edge of our Taunton Dean bed and the garlic. Also a very few buddleias left as well. These are the purple ones. This is a rhubarb plant that we planted here two years ago. And you can see, look at the size of the leaf. It is absolutely enormous. We even let that one go to seed this year, as you can see, we don't mind. Look, it's still producing stalks too. Look at the size of the plant. After a relatively short period of time, that's actually Glaskins Perpetual now, that one. But we have Victoria as well. These are the black currants. Look at the amount of berries we're getting. This is our little uh, forest garden right in the middle of the site. All the berries are really going to town and packing right now. And um, for the first time, I think we've definitely outgrown the birds uh, because usually the birds will eat most of our berries or maybe about half of them. I think this time there is plenty to share with the birds and we'll get plenty of yield ourselves as well. We're certainly not going to start putting up nets anyway or anything like that. It looks way too artificial and it's too much work to be honest and it costs money. So these are actually white yarrow which is also known as soldier's woundwort. And it looks like that when it flowers. The flowers haven't opened yet. You can also you can also get yarrow in lots of different colors. We have a pastel mix and Colorado mix as well. So those are also available. And these are the Victoria rhubarb plants in two liter pots. Rhubarb is always a good vegetable to have. We like growing rhubarb just even as a, a plant to attract beneficial insects. We do that a lot because that's the reason why our garden is doing so well because we're concentrating all of the fertility of the area into our garden because um, of course, insect activity helps with that and it also balances the ecosystem and biodiversity is everything when it comes to dealing with uh, the likes of um, uh, pests and that kind of thing. We don't really see pests as, as pests as such. Um, it's just an imbalance in the ecosystem, really. I wanted to show you these rhubarb plants here. Look how big they are. They were only planted this time last year out of two litre pots. That's again Glaskins Perpetual as it happens, but the Victoria grows the same size and in one to two years. This is a no-dig garden bed. As you can see here, it's a little messy, but at the same time, it's doing very well. Look at all the stalks here. Just to give you an idea. Look, guess who likes rhubarb? Me. Take it. <laughs> it's like an umbrella, isn't it? You can bring that home and eat it. Well, what do we mix it with? Good man, because it's too sour on its own. We learned that the hard way. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching the video. Please give us a thumbs up if you don't mind. We'd highly appreciate it. And if you want to support the work that we do, please have a look at our website. We have some potted plants and various different bits and pieces for sale there. We'd highly appreciate your support there too. And we'll see you at the next video. Bye bye. Thank you go.
Thank you.